chair now recognizes the ranking member, Mr. Barr, for five minutes for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me ask uh, Mr. Nadler first about uh, market performance during the pandemic and the municipal liquidity facility. Um, I was somewhat surprised uh, that there wasn't as much uptake. You know, there was, there's been so much um, conversation about the plight of state and local governments during the pandemic and the decline in revenues. And uh, of course, we, we did find out that large municipalities revenues actually went up during the pandemic. But uh, we were so somewhat surprised after supporting the MLF that uh, there wasn't as much uptake. Um, and, and, and throughout the pandemic, really, the, the, the municipal bond market uh, proved to be very resilient. The market certainly benefited from support from the Federal Reserve through the MLF, uh, but maybe that was more psychological uh, than actual, actual, actually uh, through utilization. But it did perform well. We avoided the worst case scenario some feared. So, Mr. Nadler, where, where do you see the municipal bond market moving in the future post-pandemic? Uh, how has the market changed? And can you speak to whether or not we actually needed the bailouts of the state and local governments if we had just encouraged municip municipalities to utilize the MLF, maybe maybe they would have just been uh, as well off. Uh, thank you, Representative Barr. I, I think that you mentioned a couple of things that are true. I do think that the we were surprised as well by the uh, the few number of people that that took advantage of the uh, of the facility. I do think that the mere fact of the facility, along with very aggressive monetary policy did have an, a very large impact on the psyche of both municipal issuers and municipal investors. And so I think that that had much to do with how quickly the, uh, we saw the municipal market move back to some, somewhat, some uh, semblance of normalcy. Second thing I'll say is that the, the impacts going forward are gonna be uneven. Uh, there were structural issues uh, before the 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 great the pandemic, and we're going to see those exacerbated after the pandemic, and they're going to be in towns with, that were uh, primarily uh, vacation destinations. It's going to take a while for those to come back. I mentioned towns that have uh, that have where they have a lot of commuters coming into the city. It's going to be a while before commuters feel comfortable getting on mass transit again in large numbers. And so I think that the recovery, while it's been real been great and been, I think, faster than most participants thought, um, it, it will, we will see an unevenness uh, to it going forward. Let me ask you about materiality. A bond rating is a significant factor that affects the interest cost of a security and helps inform investors' demand for bonds. Uh, what is the process, Mr. Nadler, for evaluating mun a municipal bond for the purposes of issuing a rating? What criteria go into assigning a rating for a municipal bond? In other words, what factors does Kroll consider to be material to a bond rating, and why is materiality so important? Materiality is huge, and I think that that is one of the one of the most important factors. So, when you're thinking about a bond rating and an actual credit rating on a whether it's a municipality or a company, you really need to make sure that what you're analyzing really does have an impact on the the fiscal health of that entity, whether it's a whether it's a city or a state. Importantly, I I think that we found that disclosure along these lines is probably one of the most important aspects. The second thing I'll say is that there are aspects of municipal uh, bonds that are impacted by that impact the. Uh, liquidity of that bond going forward. And they may not necessarily impact the uh, credit worthiness today. They may not have a material impact on it, but they would be interesting to investors and investors are asking for that type of information. And so we are advocates of more disclosure, particularly the type of disclosure that may uh, align with investor preferences over time and may also give investors in insight into the liquidity around or liquidity issues around some aspects of bonds. Well, in my remaining time, let me just turn to Mr. Hall very quickly. Uh, I'm a co-sponsor of bipartisan legislation investing in our Communities Act, which would uh, reinstate advanced refunding for municipal bonds. Mr. Hall, could you detail how reinstatement of advanced refunding, especially with low interest rates, how that would uh, help 
municipalities and uh, issuers. Absolutely. We, we are in an unprecedented time of low interest rate environment and budgetary stress on state and local governments. The ability to refund existing debt with lower tax exempt debt is a valuable tool and really needs to be reinstated. Thank you. I yield back. Uh, the gentleman's time has expired.